Hey everyone, in this module we're actually going to learn how to use the Pythagorean theorem to find a missing side of a right triangle. So first of all, we have to know our formula. The Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's easy to memorize. We have to understand the little a and little b represent the legs. The little c represents the hypotenuse. To use the Pythagorean theorem, what we need to do is read our information and draw a triangle and label it. We have to know if we're given side a, side b, or side c. Then we would substitute those numbers into the formula. We would square any numbers we have, and then we would start collecting like terms to isolate our variable. Once we get our variable isolated, it's going to have a square on it, so we're going to do the square root, but because we're finding a length of a side, we know we're not going to have both a positive and negative answer. We're only going to use the positive answer. So let's look at our PowerPoint at our example. It says, find the length of the hypotenuse of a right triangle whose legs are 6 feet and 8 feet. Okay, so pretend you have a triangular piece of land, and you know the two sides, the legs, are 6 feet and 8 feet. And you want to know that distance between the two points, the hypotenuse. We can do Pythagorean theorem to find this information. So what I've drawn is a right triangle. I labeled the two legs 6 and 8, and it doesn't matter which one you label which, but I know that hypotenuse that side across from the right angle, that slanted side, we don't know. The important thing is when you write Pythagorean theorem as a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it matters where you place the numbers. Little a and little b represent legs, little c represents hypotenuse. According to the information given here, we know the legs. So I let leg a be 6 and leg b be 8. And it wouldn't matter if I put b you know, 8 for A and 6 for B. And the reason why it doesn't matter which leg is which is because eventually we're going to add those numbers and we know from the community of property and mathematics it doesn't matter what order we added. So it doesn't matter who you let be A or B. What matters is the C, the hypotenuse. We don't know the hypotenuse in this picture, so we leave it as our unknown C squared. So now we have our equation 6 squared plus 8 squared equals C squared. You can't add the 6 and 8 yet, because first you have to follow order of operations. You have to square first. So 6 squared is 36, 8 squared is 64. Now on the left side, you can add those numbers and you get 100. 100 equals C squared. As you all notice, we have a quadratic equation. We have an exponent of 2. When we have a quadratic equation that has a squared term and a number, a constant, the quickest way to solve this is square rooting. So I square rooted both sides. I know the square root of c squared is c, and I know the square root of 100 is plus or minus 10. But because it's a real life problem, it's application, it's finding a missing side of a right triangle, we know a missing side would never be a negative number. Have you ever measured anything that's negative? No, they're on rulers, there are no negative numbers. So we would say the length of this hypotenuse is 10 feet. We only give the positive answer when working with the Pythagorean theorem. See how easy that was? Great. Let's go to the whiteboard.